Hello, everyone, and welcome to the week ahead. We are in the first week of September, I'm just about to receive this Virgo new moon. And yesterday I published the month ahead. I really emphasized quite a lot these first four days of um, September. So I wanted to come on here and kind of break down the week ahead in a context and definitely listen to the month ahead if you're um, looking at, you know, especially from the perspective of this is a new moon time. And what is the new moon all about? It's about the seeding of intentions. And the balsamic phase or the dark time, which is where we are right now, I always think of as like the cleaning house, clearing out uh, the ending of that last lunar cycle. And in doing that, we can reflect, especially from a Virgo perspective, what is left undone, what's un solved, unanswered, incomplete, um, you know, what, what have we not done or tended to, especially in terms of relationships and conversations that we need to, um, in order to move forward in our life with clarity, with discernment, um, and with solutions really, because, while Virgo could be very good at analyzing all that is wrong, all that's not right with the world, really it's a calling to a greater level of service and healing that allows us to really know what it is that we need to do. And I'm talking about knowing, you know, from an inner perspective and inner truth perspective, um, knowing from the perspective of like, oh, this is my sacred calling, right? This is my one sacred life. Here's what it is that I am here to do. And if you're not doing, you know, what your soul especially is calling you to do, there can be a deep feeling of sort of existential crisis. If we're not doing what our heart is calling us to do, there can be a feeling of deep grief or aloneness. And if we're not doing, you know, what we know we should be doing, there can be a sense of guilt, right? And so we want to resolve all of that so that we can really live in alignment with our souls and so that we can really feel that we're we're showing up for what's the you know the larger question is like what's mine to do you know and then once we know that and we can live that especially from the deeper places within our soul, we can know what changes have to be made in order for us to be living in that way. Or we can at least attempt to experiment, right? Um, I think one of the advantages of having both Jupiter and Mars in Gemini is there's a lot of uh, mental flexibility and expansion of thought and action that would give us the support more or less to experiment with different ideas, right? To try on, let's say, what works and what doesn't work in order to find our way towards resolution. And at least with Venus this week, moving towards the South Node, there's an essential knowingness of what we've been carrying this whole year that is um, ready to be released. And whether this is the releasing of a relationship or the releasing of a dynamic, the releasing of a feeling, the releasing of a communication, whether it's being in a state of a deeper listening 
inside oneself. I talked a lot in um, the month ahead about this process of returning to self and calling all the parts of the soul back because that's essentially, you know, the process that of reclamation that has to be done before we can integrate and um, evolve into the next stage or phase of our lives. And there's so much in the astrology right now that says like, oh, you really can't take that with you anymore, or you really can't continue to do that or live that way anymore. And when we think about it from like a humanity perspective, we can see both with fear and with objectivity, how much is dysfunctional in our world, right? How much of the systems that we have in place don't really work. And the status quo would have us say, well, that's just the way it is, or this is, you know, this thing is too, this, um, especially these larger systems, when we're talking about plutonic systems, government structures, social structures, corporate structures, some of these things it's always so funny to me that they said that banks were too big to fail. That's That was not true. And we saw that in 2008 when the banking system failed. And even again, later on in years where I think it failed, but just got bailed out, it they weren't too big to fail. They just had big failures, right? And it was a big failure of a system that immense amounts of people relied upon for their resources, for, you know, it was like mortgage loans. These were, these were people's homes. These were people's financial lives. They were individuals, but to those institutions, right, into the plutonic structures, they were numbers on a spreadsheet. They were assets that were encumbrances. And these are all Virgo, Capricorn type of words, but I'm I'm articulating that that particular failure actually isn't necessarily complete. The systems themselves didn't um, regenerate into new structures. They simply bailed their failures onto the larger people. And we haven't even seen that relative to how it has impacted our economic system since COVID. But it's clearly evident in the world, right? You can look at the rising costs of food, the rising costs of living, and look at the fact that like everything you purchase out there, if you're paying for it with PayPal or Stripe or some merchant card processor, the person who you're buying that from is losing roughly two to 4% of everything, right? So there's this embedded loss of capital, loss of um, resource that every per, and it's like, it, it's woven into the system. And I've seen more and more of my small local businesses and friends over the last year, people who are with an immense amount of heart and love and integrity running businesses themselves. Most of these are women run businesses making the difficult choice to close those structures. Um, in fact, one of my friends made an announcement today that her um, business would be closing, you know, by the end of September. That's an example of this Venus in Libra, right? It doesn't, these relationships or these changes that can be made relative to this time and the clarity of what we are having to let go of doesn't necessarily have to be only relationally. In that way, it reflects like a relationship to the customers that she serves, the community that she serves, um, the cost, her family, her living. like, And in the natal chart, when we're having a transit, to our chart. You can see from this chart, if I were overlaying these transits onto your natal chart, how many different areas of life are being activated? It's 
really profound. Look at this. Um, think about we've got Libra, Virgo, Leo, Gemini, Taurus, um, you know, this is Aries, Pisces, uh, Capricorn and Aquarius and Sagittarius and Scorpio. Pretty much every single house, every single um, sign has a planet or an asteroid goddess activated and interacting with the other. And a lot of what I talked about in the month ahead was this dynamic tension of squares, right? Squares in, in essence produce a crisis of consciousness where we have to make a choice, where we can often be drawn back into the past and be seeing the past and be facing the past, but be needing to make a decision that liberates us from the past in a new way. And we can feel the inner tension of these things. I even spoke about it a couple of weeks ago relative to the political landscape because of how I just felt so powerfully when that Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, T-square was happening um, that the political decisions that were unfolding during that week were a re deep reflection of this kind of crisis of consciousness that activates the polarizations, right, of, of our, not only our belief system, our thought system, but in, in a way we're having to face so many different parts of our life and all these different unanswered, unresolved dynamics. And of course, the soul is going to long for evolution in the way that it longs for a return to its source, right? And that's why this month in particular, with both uh, the start of the eclipse season and this new moon, are very significant to us. So we start this week with this new moon in Virgo. And this new moon in Virgo really sets the seed of the evolutionary cycle that's coming up with this very first eclipse that I talked about. If you go to the end of the September month ahead, I gave a breakdown, a short breakdown of this eclipse in September. But it's saying we have to, we have to sign up for something that is going to help us to learn devote, dedicate ourselves to the very mindset shift, changes, clearing mm -hmm. um, that would allow us to call into being the new life while simultaneously supporting us in shifting out of the old life. And it was clear to me, I made the decision last night in my meditation and that I wanted to sign up for Abracadabra, which is Shiloh Sophia's one and only year-long painting program that starts on um, the, the Equinox. So, you know, and I can put a link to her program because for me, this whole Pluto transit in Aquarius is activating the polarity point of Leo. It is really calling us to creative self-actualization, right? That's where our power lies. That's where our agency and our sovereignty lies is how do we claim ourselves as creative beings of created by our creator and really reconnect with our source. And so this program that she's offering, I think really blends um, both the deep inner work. I described it as realizing that I needed to pick up a flashlight in my life so that I could point it on the areas of darkness, on the places where I lack clarity, where I'm, I've been stuck this past year so that I can illuminate the, the real path forward and to do that through community and in a space of learning where I'm actively engaging, um, my mind and my creative faculties to me there's no better answer than that and so that's what I made that decision you know and I I really I encourage you to find that with this new moon what is that place where you are um, investing in the the creation of your life right and with Virgo it 
it is about it's earth mercury right it's a mercury ruled sign and it's an earth based sign so it's very practical you know sometimes this is as simple as choosing to clear out the clutter of our life and make space for what we deeply desire sometimes this is as simple as finally getting to editing that book and you know getting it out there those teachings or actualizing yourself you know if you've been wanting to be an astrologer getting yourself in the mindset of what do i need to do to cultivate my craft right virgo is the apprentice a lot of what i did this last year was apprentice students in my private mentoring group to learn how to work with their own chart it's about picking up the tools of our life and our mind to help us bridge and find solutions so that we can truly be of service to this world. And not of service because we're perfect people, but we're actually of service because we're imperfect people. Oh, that makes me wanna cry. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not a healed, perfect human being. I don't have all the things that I want in my life. My heart still longs deeply for things that have been unanswered. But all of that has pushed and tested my character and the quality of my soul and allowed me to remain true, you know, to what it is that I desire while simultaneously letting go in all the ways that I don't have control over external circumstances, you know, people, places, things, and to find the humility and contentment of being where I am and the deep acceptance for the imperfect nature of reality relative to our human experience. I think on a soul level, it is all perfect. You know, we we called it all, we created it all, we we love it all, we know it all, we wanted it all because on a soul level, we get it. But on a human level, it's hard sometimes, you know? It's hard to feel like, oh man, I just worked so hard and I'm still struggling to pay the bills or I don't have that partnership or that love in my life that I desire, or I don't know where, where I'm supposed to go or what I'm supposed to do, whatever these questions are that we're wrestling with in our life. Um, and I think clarity comes not necessarily through, <laughs> uh, the means that we would make of it, you know, it doesn't always come through the I Ching or, the oracle or um, the tarot cards or even the prayer, you know, I've been re super devoted to prayer this last year. Um, and it's always been a part of my life, but it's really increased tenfold. And my relationship to prayer has changed in so many ways and continues to evolve but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm like walking with greater answers or more clarity than anybody else. You know, it just means that I'm walking, you know, that I'm walking with God and I'm walking with my soul in a way where I'm trying to bring um, myself into peace and alignment. I, and from a Pluto perspective, this is bringing ourselves into cooperation, with the soul's desire, you know, with the intention, the bottom line intention of the soul. Um, and, you know, we're human beings. So we have most of the time, the hard work is getting out of our own way, you know, getting out of our own patterns, getting out of our own self-criticism, getting out of our own inadequacies, getting out of our own, you know, feelings of loss or deficiency, getting out of all uh, blah, 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 right? <laughs> you know? And as we work through this week, really, we got, we get that Virgo new moon tomorrow. Um, for my students, we have our new moon ceremony on Tuesday morning at 930 Pacific Standard Time, right? Where we're seeding these intentions of the Virgo cycle. And then the moon moves right into Libra on Wednesday, 
immediately crossing the south node and then joining with Venus, Juno, Black Moon, and even the south node of Venus. And so there, I think that Thursday, especially, we have this strong Libra um, new phase of intentions. Even if you were to wait, if you wanted to wait until Thursday um, to set intentions from a Libra perspective, we, we would be setting intentions for alignment, for balance, for harmony, for peace, for unity, for union, you know, for for our desires to come through, for our commitments to be empowered by the awareness of how valuable we are, how important we are, how loved we are, right? If if that is the bottom line, if the root of who we know ourselves to be is what's informing the decisions that we make in terms of where we invest our time and what we do with relationships and how we and who we call into our lives, right? We might be calling in love and connection and relationship. And, and in order for that really to happen, it has to happen through us, right? All relationship happens through the filter, through the lens that we see it. And, and it really can be that, you know, Libra, I think of as that reciprocity of giving and receiving. And when it's equal, like when the scales are balanced, they're not necessarily equal. That's a really th important thing to keep in mind. If you look at the Libra scales, you know, sometimes one is more than the other, but there's always this weighing and measuring of how am I in relationship to you and how is this working for me as it relates to you? You know, and then right as we get into that part of the week, we have Mars entering Cancer, which I think will soften some of the harsh, you know, just the day before, like 29 degree Mars, uh, Mars squares Neptune. Um, I've just been having such an interesting time listening and um, reflecting on how all of these different ideologies and ideas, like whether it's political ideas or religious ideas or our our thoughts and beliefs about things, how we can become so charged, right? And so triggered by things that challenge us and how one of the more challenging things for human beings to do is to move beyond those triggers into understanding, into compassion, into forgiveness, into total acceptance of all that is, right? Pisces is about that total acceptance of the all, right? And the unconditional love of the all covers those that we might even consider evil, bad, you know, horrible, um, people in the world and where our judgments or our, um, control, uh, you know, where we're trying to control the past and protect ourselves for, for fear of that, that this might hurt me or that might hurt me. Um, this, you know, this, this becomes problematic when we're triggered. And I do think that as Mars moves into, you know, squares Neptune and then moves into Cancer, we might actually experience some softening of this that would allow us to come into more of a relationship of like, what is my courage for? What is my vulnerability for? How is it that what might appear as a weakness is actually our greatest strength? Softening and and being tender and being vulnerable might actually be the way to solve as opposed to fighting and arguing or remaining in a state of trigger or, you know, and I, I recently saw someone post 
a triggered text interaction, you know, between themselves and their baby's father on on Facebook. And it, re it really showed me um, in a way like that's the harshness of that Mars Gemini. It can be very reactive. But what it points to on a deeper level is the vulnerability that this woman feels in interacting with her father's son and sort of his ignorance or ineptitude towards her needs and her you know and and that's a part of this kind of tension that we would see like we we don't know how to soften because we're having to be so we're being so triggered by those thoughts that remind us so much of the past which might have been really really hard and yet at the same time we are actually moving mars is moving in this evolutionary journey towards its squared in the nodes we are moving towards that crisis point where we have to choose between how we use our vulnerability our courage and how we come into relationship with others right the masculine and the feminine and these are ancient wars if we think back to you know the biblical times even the origin story in genesis of adam and eve right it creates all these it's a very virgo pisces story and it really is like this process of both war and struggle and pain and suffering and rejection you know and choices and all these things that have been imprinted in us from a very beginning point, right? Very few of us, I imagine, um, grew up in family systems where there was a whole lot of peace and harmony between the parents. If you were one of those luck lucky people, like bless your soul, because you got the imprinting of what it was like to see husband and wife, man and woman, like working together in harmony. But there are so many you know, single parents and people who have really struggled within dysfunctional family systems where the patterns continue again and again and again. And we, as souls, we will replay these particular patterns until we resolve the dynamics. And I think that's the big part of the square to the nodes or any, any square that we have in our natal chart where we're working out a lifetime kind of thing. The, these transits I'm talking about in terms of shorter energetics and or cycles that are happening within our lives. But as we work these things out, we naturally raise the bar of our evolution, of our families, of our children, of our communities to where we set the precedence that, um, you know, free freedom from codependency from um where we can have relationships of love and peace and harmony right and i think we're all on some level desiring to go back to a place where we feel connected to god we have all that we need all of our needs are provided where we are in harmonious relationship with one another where we feel healed and whole and where we can be totally naked meaning totally transparent about who and what we are and be seen and loved and valued and belong right that's the garden of eden from a human perspective and evolution is the process of that return to source that is pushing us forward incrementally as though um we're on the, one of the longest <laughs> slowest journeys of our lives i'm sorry friends i wish but then when we have these moments, especially with these retrograde planets, with these eclipse portals, where things do accelerate, where the evolutionary impulse accelerates and picks up and says, not that anymore, not, we're not doing that anymore, we're not doing that anymore, and it's just one by one, whether we're consciously releasing it ourselves or whether it's being taken from us whether we're finding ourselves in situations of you know disillusionment or dissolving or extreme vulner vulnerability we have got to get back in touch with 
the root of our soul in order to know what it is that we are here to do, that we are to do, right? So this week, I do think is the seed of that. And as we move towards, you know, we have this new moon, we get to this um, end of this week, this first quarter moon in Sagittarius, right? Sagittarius is the uh, opposite. So here we the sun's going to move through an opposition to Saturn just in the days before that, just so you can see that and there's sun opposite Saturn on Saturday. And then um, as the sun comes into square Jupiter, uh, we get to this first quarter moon, right? Which happens, um, you know, Tuesday into Wednesday in Sagittarius. And the first quarter square, let's see, or there, there's different kinds of squares, and I'm always wanting to reflect back to you all these different pieces as, as they're um, taught by Jeffrey Wolf Green. He says, the individual meaning of the new evolutionary purpose must now be given a new form to operate through in order to be fully actualized within the individual and the nature of the form depends on the planets that are aspected. Um, it would involve evolving by analysis. This is a Virgo thing, right? Now we have Mercury analysis of the intrinsic weaknesses or deficiencies in the prevailing intellectual systems or bodies of knowledge. Sometimes reading what he says is very hard because <laughs> creative tension is produced through the process of moving forward with the new form versus the compulsive tendency to slide back into old patterns of behavior. This also manifests itself because the soul may not know yet how to actualize the new form. The resulting tension is usually seen as the individual against him or herself, against society, or in, against all that constitutes the past, right? So whether it's an internal battle around a decision, whether it seems like an external battle of like, oh, I have to just rebel against all the things that I used to do or that used to be, uh, whether it's, you know, a need to distance oneself from society in order to find oneself, right? We have the new seed, the new phase of Venus with the South Node, the new seed of this first quarter square um, it's all coming in to give us what is necessary information, ideas, beliefs, and even the structures, right? You can see Saturn is a part of this. Saturn is very important. If we can't take these ideas and beliefs and harness them and anchor them into reality, it's very hard to move things forward. We can be uh, in a place of feeling just stuck. And yet if we take them and we see them, even if we don't know, hey, where's this gonna go? What's this gonna do? How's it gonna work? Where am I gonna, you know, where, where am I in my own larger evolutionary journey, like, what do I want? Like, these are very good questions to be asking yourself. What do I need to learn? How do I need to think differently? What do I need to see differently? Who do I need to seek out to support me in order to be able to begin to actualize this new evolutionary intention? Because that's what's happening. And I think that also the full moon will, um, will have it will have a way of giving us the that reality check in a more illuminated form but this first forks first quarter square this first 10 days of September really is the catalyst for that so my friends um this week Love Evolution begins. I have a free intro class on Friday, the 6th. There's a link in the description to RSVP for the Zoom link if you want to join me live. If you know you want to join me in Love Evolution, you can sign up 
now. Um, details are on my website. It's going to be a really powerful time of focusing in on these Venus Pluto dynamics through the end of this year and catalyzing our our own process of evolution from within and I'm really looking forward to it um yeah and as always leave me a comment if there's something in this video that touched your heart let me know um how you're doing Give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. I post a weekly video along with a monthly report. And from time to time when I teach a free class, like the Love Evolution class, will be here on the channel as well. So you can tune into all of that. So grateful to be here. This is my profound calling to service and creative actualization. And your presence here is what makes it possible. So... Thanks so much, my friends, and bye for now.